Hello YouTube, I am super excited to announce that I finally crossed 100 subscribers. This has been a fantastic journey for me and I would like to thank all of you for supporting me till here and hope for the same kind of support in the future as well. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would highly recommend you to do so. Uh, and as promised, uh, we are going to start with a new playlist from today and this is going to be on operating systems, the basics of operating systems and I'm going to cover the entire operating system playlist by taking Linux as our operating system and we're going to reference uh, through Linux uh, for this entire course. Uh, I would also like to tell that this is not going to be a, a course for you to clear your exams in engineering or uh, your masters or whatever. Uh, this is going to be more from a perspective of uh, how you would apply your concepts, your operating system concepts in your industry. Uh, as in how you would actually work with operating systems when you are working in a company. Alright, so uh, let's quickly get started. So here is the first video for uh, basics of operating system playlist. And in this video, we are going to look at a few uh, doubts and a few terminologies that I always used to get confused with. Uh, so uh, let's get started with this and then slowly as we uh, move ahead with the playlist we will be diving into many more uh, topics okay uh, so today we are going to talk about what a kernel is what is a shell a window manager and a desktop environment uh, the various linux distributions which are present and uh, what is a package manager okay so let's get started with the kernel the kernel uh, basically all of these are my definitions I did not really take them anywhere from the internet as such so it might not be a perfect definition but it is enough for you to understand what uh, these things actually mean uh, so a kernel uh, basically I would like to categorize its functionality into two broad parts two main categories uh, the first thing would be for it to actually interact with the hardware okay uh, so basically a kernel is nothing but a set of programs it is just a set of C programs and a few header files and what it does is it is allowing you to interact with the hardware. Okay, so it basically has really low level code which uh, talks to the hardware directly and it also exposes a set of functions that our applications can call to interact with the hardware. The best example for this would be a simple printf statement uh, in your uh, respective languages, maybe print statement in Python. Uh, so what you do is you just print let's say hello world and uh, it is displayed on the screen right so this is basically the kernel who is talking to your screen which is a hardware uh, and all your program all that your program has to do is tell the kernel to do something to the hardware that is print hello world to the screen in our case so this would be the best example uh, similarly it also interacts with the other devices like your keyboard your mouse your earphones and all of that uh, the next thing it also does is it administers a lot of stuff on your operating system. Uh, it administers processes, it helps in scheduling of processes, it helps you run your applications. Then it also looks at uh, and manages memory. Uh, by memory we uh, mean RAM here, a random access memory and not your hard disk. Uh, it also uh, supports IO devices that is your printers and your input devices can be like your keyboard or if you have like a touchscreen tablet then that can also be considered as an input device and so on. And it also takes care of security and the networking part. Okay, so these are like uh, broadly broad functionalities of the kernel you can tell. Uh, and uh, let's say a, uh, you connect a new hardware to your system tomorrow. Let's say you connect a printer or uh, let's just say it's a normal USB pen drive. Uh, so every device that you connect to your kernel, uh, it requires a device driver, okay. So device driver is nothing but another C code which basically talks about how it can interact with the drive, uh, with the device, okay. So it's just a normal C program that helps you to basically talk to, uh, it helps the kernel to talk to that device. It knows all the functionalities that are present in the device. Okay, uh, so let's quickly look at uh, which kernel we are using and how do we find that. So there is this command called as unimr. Okay, I'm on my test machine here. 
okay i am on my test box here so let me run the command for you and uh, here's what it tells it uh, gives me the version of the kernel and uh, how do i actually see where the kernel is present it will be present here in the boot directory with uh, and it starts from vm vm linux all right so this is the kernel that i have uh, the version that we saw here 5001028 uh, is actually this one okay so this is the kernel that i'm currently using okay you can go and do the same in your terminal as well and uh, find out which kernel version you are using okay so we just found the kernel in the boot directory uh, so to know more about uh, the kernel it is actually an open source software so uh, you're free to go and see how it is coded what all are uh, parts of it and all of it uh, just as i said the device drivers are also present here uh, then you have a lot of source code which you can just go and experiment with the best thing that i like about this is the documentation directory which actually has a lot of uh, documentation for everything that is written into the kernel so if you're stuck at any part while you're going through the kernel's code, you can always come to the document section and have a look at uh, any module that you want to hear. Okay, uh, so that is all we had for kernel. If you still have any questions regarding this, uh, you can feel free to ask that in the comments and I can uh, try responding to that. The next thing we are going to look at is shell. Okay, shell is just another simple program or uh, application that has been written uh, and what this helps you to do is it helps you to run programs and commands from it. So basically it's just an interactive application uh, and you can uh, basically run anything from the shell. Okay, and uh, the most common shell is called as bash. It is uh, born again shell and uh, let me see if I've cloned it here. Yeah, so if you want to go through the source code of it, you can just run this command git clone and the repo for it. Okay, the git repo. And if I go to bash, you can see a set of functionalities that it has. So it is all really modular. So you can go through any of these and you know, uh, you can understand what is actually written in it uh, to understand more about the shell. Uh, let me just pick something as an example here uh maybe we can just look at this okay this uh tells bash hist dot c right so what does this mean uh this is basically uh your shell keeping a track of all the history of commands that you've run okay since it is interactive you uh send a set of commands and it returns a set of output to you okay and uh this module the history module is basically going to keep a track of all the commands that you have run uh, previously okay so feel free to go through all of this code whenever you get time uh, to understand how they actually do it so to see what uh, i said actually makes sense let us run this command okay what this is going to do is it's going to list a set of processes that you are running uh, in a hierarchical manner okay uh, so this is the shell that we are in currently and uh, what we try to do is we try to run a command in the shell uh, this is a command that we run so it is being spawned from this process itself okay this has been uh, forked and uh, basically what bash has done is it has called a system called known as execve execve and uh, it has basically tried to run this command or this process for us okay uh, and uh, here if you notice dollar dollar is the process id of bash that we were running and uh, it has substituted it to be 2084 in our case okay uh, you do not have to be confused about this because we will be going through processes uh, as well in the later parts of this playlist okay Uh, so let's try making a mistake and see what uh, bash actually does okay as you know uh, there is a simple command called cat uh, which basically 
prints out the contents of this file. There is a file called etc password and uh, it basically has some content in it and I'm trying to print it out. Let's say I make a mistake while doing this uh, and instead of cat I type cta and bash clearly tells me that uh, this is something which does not exist. There is no command called cta uh, so I cannot really run it and it also gives me a set of options that I can actually try out. Okay, uh, and how is it able to do that is because it has something called as a path variable. Okay, and it goes to each of these directories user local s bin, user local bin, and all of these still snap bin and searches for CTA. Okay, uh, since CTA is not an application found in any of these uh, directories, it actually prints out telling it was not able to find this application and it does not run it. Okay, similarly, let's say you have a test. Uh, let me just do this. Okay, it's I'm just creating an empty uh, Python script here. It shouldn't do anything. But uh, let's say I want to run this application. All I will have to do is actually give the interpreter uh, and give my script. Okay, if you don't want to do this, you can also give uh, test.py okay uh, and just make sure it has a, a shebang to it and it also is executable only then this will actually work okay now going back to this uh, so you saw that uh, shell offers various functionalities for you as an end user to be able to interact with it okay uh, just a few examples of shells that you can explore. Bash is the most common shell which is used and which comes by default in most of the Linux operating systems. Uh, then we also have CSH and ZSH. My personal favorite shell is ZSH and uh, you should definitely check it out. Uh, now moving on to window manager and desktop environment. This is something that I always used to be confused when I was in my engineering. Okay, so to get to know more about uh, window manager and desktop environment, you should also know what X windows is. So basically uh, X windows or X 11 is something that you would have commonly heard of. Uh, so basically this is uh, again an application which helps you to draw graphical elements on your display. Okay, if you do not have X windows, what you will have to do is you will have to specify a color uh, like your RGB color and then you will have to specify at which point it has to be present on the screen. This is very tedious for you as a programmer to you know implement all of this, animate the windows, move the windows to be able to move the windows and all of that. So X windows basically gives you a layer uh, or it's basically an application and what it helps you to do is it is more like a primitive framework that allows you to make windows on your screen. It helps you to create windows, it helps you to have a keyboard interactions, it helps you to make new windows, it helps you to move windows around and all of that. Okay, this is the most basic thing that you will require uh, to get started with a graphical desktop. Then coming to a window manager. A window manager is again an application. What it helps you to do is it helps you to place windows. Okay, you can tell that I want this window to be in front of the other window. I want this window to be maximized, I want this window to be minimized, I don't want to see this window and all of that. Okay, so this is where your window manager comes into picture and uh, the having a uh, X windows is mandatory for you to have a window manager. Okay, uh, but a desktop environment comes in the next phase, you do not really require a desktop environment to have a window manager. And here I have a few examples of window manager. And i3 is my favorite uh, tiling window manager. You should definitely check it out if you do not know about it. Uh, the next thing is a desktop environment. Okay, uh, a desktop environment basically includes a window manager, which again requires X windows to run. You see, right, we are building layer over layer uh, just to make it easy for an end user to interact with the system. Uh, so basically your desktop environment is more of an integrated system uh, over a window manager. Uh, it helps you to close windows. You must have seen the uh, buttons on the window, right? The minimize, maximize uh, and the close buttons. And you must have seen the panels, your start menu bar and all of these which come with the desktop environment. Okay, this helps you to change your cursor, uh, your fonts and all of that. 
सो अ डेस्कटॉप एनवायरमेंट ऑल्सो कंसिस्ट ऑफ अदर यूटिलिटीज लाइक दिस अगेन डिपेंड्स फ्रॉम डेस्कटॉप एनवायरमेंट टू एनवायरमेंट बट मोस्ट ऑफ देम हैव दीज कॉमन यूटिलिटीज लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ देम कम विद अ टर्मिनल सो यू कैन हैव योर शेल स्टार्ट इन द टर्मिनल डायरेक्टली एंड यू कैन स्टार्ट इंट्रैक्टिंग विद इट then you have a text editor for all your uh, editing purposes and then you also have a file browser through which you can browse the entire file system okay uh, a few examples of this is gnome kde cinnamon and xfc uh, the last thing that i wanted to talk about is a display manager so basically as soon as your system is booted up you must be presented with a screen uh which basically allows you to choose the user and login right so that's exactly what a display manager is it's also sometimes called as a login manager but this is not a part of the desktop desktop environment in most of the cases you will have to manually install your display manager so that you can customize your login screen and from the display manager is where you choose the desktop environment let's say you have all the three of these desktop environments set up uh on the display manager you can actually choose a desktop environment that you want to go to and then you can get into that okay uh the next thing that i want to talk about is linux distributions it's also called as linux distros in short uh so what is a linux distribution so as we saw about uh like the linux repo also that we browsed it's basically just a kernel it's not an operating system linux is not an operating system it's just a kernel okay and uh, it is very difficult for us as end users to just have a kernel and uh, talk to it and to make system calls to run our applications and all of that right so to make it more user friendly we have a lot of applications and tools around it okay and uh, the complete package of all of this the kernel the desktop environment internet tools like a browser messenger login manager and all of this together makes up a linux distro so if you are a power user you should ideally start with installing a linux kernel and then starting to install all these applications that you require okay and that's exactly the concept of using arch linux wherein you choose the kind of applications that you want to install while installing the operating system okay uh so this is what a linux distro is and any guesses what the most friendly linux distro is obviously the uh, great ubuntu Uh, most of the folks that i've met love to use ubuntu as uh, their linux distribution and here are a few more distributions that you can try out if you haven't done so already uh, there is linux mint there is debian fedora centos rel is uh, red hat enterprise linux which most of the corporate organizations use uh, then again you have your arch linux for power user the last thing that we are going to cover today is package manager so what is a package manager uh, it's very similar to your play store okay uh, sorry the app on your phone which helps you to browse through apps on the play store okay so the play store app on your phone is very similar to a package manager in a linux system okay uh so basically what happens is you have a package manager let's say you want to install zsh okay you just give a command uh, let's say you have a aptitude based uh, system so you use apt get install and zsh and what this does is it internally goes and contacts its repository okay a repository here is similar to a google play store for android and your apple app store for all your apple devices and it has it is basically a repository of all the applications which are present so your package manager contacts the repository it downloads it and installs it on your system okay the most common package managers are aptitude uh, and in short it stands for apt and then you have yum then you have red hat package manager which is rpm then you have pacman mostly for arch linux uh, and so on hope you found the video interesting and uh, please do like and subscribe to the channel uh, if you did so uh, also put your comments and the questions in the comment section below and i will uh, reply to them as soon as possible uh, hope to see you all in the next video coming up in the next week and uh, thanks for watching